Welcome to our Warhammer 40,000 Tactica for Eldar Fire Dragons. Typical unit size that I take would just be six. Again, this is a unit I always have in my army. You're paying 16 points for a ballistic skill four guy armed with the equivalent of a multi melter, and he's got melter bombs, and a four up armor save. That's superb value for points. You've got to take these in your army. Some take them just plain as they are just five, that's all right. But to make them a little bit more reliable, take the, the X-Art with the Fire Pike. It just gives you a Ballistic Skill 5 guy with an extra bit of reach to it. Uh, the rules have changed a little bit now in, in Sixth. Uh, they're no longer, you can no longer make them Strength 9 for Tank Hunters. Instead, they get to reroll Armor Penetrations. So you want plenty of hits. The more figures, the better. But six is a good round number. Not very expensive in points. So I take the basic five and then I give them an X arc and upgrade him with the fire pipe. Now it's no good taking the fire dragons on foot. You'd need to protect them again, as I've said before, Eldar infantry are soft targets. They need protection. And the best protection you can give them would be the wave serpent, well armored transport. I take it with no upgrades. So it's just a flat 100 points because it's probably going to be destroyed in the game. So I just leave it as it is, it's a unit I expect to lose. Um, so no upgrades to it, it's just there for flying around. If it blows up then I haven't ex expended too many points um, on that vehicle. So that's a good unit combination. And then I often, almost always add to the fire dragons. I do like to keep them alive and I also like to use one of my characters with him, that would be Prince Uriel. I add him into the unit. Number of reasons. They, the fire dragons get out. They do their job of blowing off a vehicle, and then after that, they then serve as protection for the independent character, and they may lose a few after being shot at because often they're right in the heart of the enemy. They're shot, okay, but Uriel's protected. And then he, on the following turn, he's then free to go and assault the unit. And sometimes I will split the area away. He'll go off and do his own attack on a vehicle or on a monstrous creature, and then, or on a unit of space range with his special ball eye attack. And then the remainder of the fire dragons will go off and attack another target. Or I'll keep them together. But it adds a bit of flexibility. With, with him added in, it gives you two options with the unit once it's landed. And I found that's a good. A good combination, and especially now in sixth, if you find that you've blown up a vehicle or a transport vehicle, you then have the option to charge it now with that same unit that blew it up. With Urio inside, he'll be able to take up, take on pretty much anything that's inside a transport vehicle. So that just adds another dimension to it. You don't have to do that. I do. I like to use Urio and put him in the army there. Right, using fire dragons against tanks. Say the um, Imperial Guard is set up way back in their deployment zone, you want to be able to blow up the tank with the uh, fire dragons. Then in the transport you can bring on from reserve or from hiding behind a building. And I would just zoom them up the full amount and say you reach this distance here, which is perfect. And you want to just fly straight at the vehicle and then just try and survive the incoming attack. So you've got standard lean rust there. This tactic, it's not going to work every time. But with a wave serpent travelling at that speed, you're going to be protected pretty good and you can deliver your payload onto the enemy position. So let's just say we've moved up the wave serpent transport. We're going to try and take out this Lehman Russ. So he'll fire at us, the heavy bolters are going to be no use. Laz can, he's got half a chance of hitting, so he hits and he penetrates. So I've got a jinx save, it's usually 5 plus. Well, it will be increased to 4+, plus because I've turbo boosted, and I've made it, so that survived that hit. Right, then he's going to try and take me out with a battle cannon here. And it's, uh, he's going to sort of aim it above here, just, just in the middle, so you roll the scatter. And now he's panicking, he's down to his last shot, it's gone wild, it's all, it happens a lot with the guard. It's gone 7, there, and it's actually not going to even touch, no. So he's completely fouled, and that happens a lot of times. Now you're free if you don't get shot by anyone else. 
So you're free, you want to take this gun. You don't have to hit him side armor, they're that good at penetrating. Doesn't matter what type of armor angle, but let's say we can. So you can move in six, pivot your vehicle round, then you can deploy your six, and you've got him. Now if you're going to deploy your character, sometimes I decide to leave him inside if it's the area is too hostile. And I think this unit is going to be a suicide unit, it's going to die. I'll leave the character inside. Let's say for uh, the sake of this tutorial that we'll leave it. And I'm going to try and position him in a way to protect the characters and exarch. They're there. And then do I even need to roll? Because you know what's going to happen here. We've got five regular guys they need freeze so there's four hits Exarch he's hit Uri is a strength nine weapon you could still hit there he has on that ballistic skill and so strength nine that's a penetration and then these uh, these melters should be in pairs so that's a penetration there a penetration there Penetration there, penetration there, and there's one more to roll for, and that is uh, no, but it's tank hunters, so you get to re roll. So 13 uh, is a glance, but we'll leave that one. It just shows you that you've got three penetrations there. And you're adding one to that one, so that becomes a six, that's an eight, so it's long gone. But I'm showing you the point that a unit like that will almost give you a guaranteed kill. If you can deliver that unit to where you want it on the battlefield, it will blow up any vehicle that you want. So it's a reliable Eldar choice. The fire dragons are soft, you need to protect them, so you take them in the transport. Once their mission's done, you can pick them up and then you can drive them off somewhere else. That's Eldar fire dragon tactics. I wouldn't use them for any other purpose. Maybe ambush a monstrous creature, that's a good idea. If they then get charged by the monstrous creature, then you've got your Uriel to protect them. So they work together. Again, you're taking unit choices that work together and protect each other to fulfill an objective. If, if these were taken as foot elder and you had to run these across the battlefield, you're going to get hit. You'll take a couple of casualties, and then on the next turn you'll take two more. And you've got down and you've lost your squad. You're down to a few characters. The last few die, and then there was no point in taking them whatsoever. So take them in the transport, and you will do well. And then stick a character in them, and that will beef them up and make them even better. Thanks for watching this, Tactica. And uh, be sure to check out my channel. There's plenty of uh, showcase videos. You can see all of these close up in HD. And there's battle reports, painting tutorials and a whole load more. Thanks for watching.